How's it going guys? Welcome to FTO News. Today we're going to talk about Daredevil, Olivia Munn, I think that's it. Yeah, this is going to be a Daredevil day. Because spoiler time. First up, movie news. Movie news! So Olivia Munn is going to be Psylocke. A lot of people are angry about this because they say it's whitewashing. Well, Psylocke was Caucasian, British Caucasian, then she transported her mind into an Asian assassin. So... Yeah. It's not really whitewashing if you're using the second indication of the character to tell the story, so... I don't really have a problem with it. I just, my problem is Olivia Munn's acting. I know she was in the newsroom. She was decent. She played a smart character. Like, she pulled those lines off pretty well, but is she X-Men smart? Is she smart enough to hang out with McAvoy and Fassbender? And Jackman? Like, is she is she that good? Like, Patrick Stewart? Can Olivia Munn, like, act with those guys? Maybe it should be, like, how Bishop and Colossus was. Like, not many lines. She'll just be the face of the character, and that's it. Because if she talks and sounds stupid, that's going to be horrible for everybody. But, good wishes, hopefully. Fingers, fingers crossed. Next up, TV news. TV news! Next story, Daredevil. I've been wanting to talk about this this entire freaking time. So, I was one of those guys who wanted to keep quiet, like who thought this Daredevil was going to suck because I saw Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I still don't like Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think that show is... <sighs> Terrible, and that's the nicest way I can put that. Arrow is kind of fizzling away. Flash is, to me, kind of doing the same thing. They're, just, they're going so big, but they're still keeping the same, like, theme of the show. Like, nothing's really changing, but they're learning all this new stuff, and nothing's really changing in the show. Like, you, you find out who the reverse Flash is, and they haven't done anything about it. it Like why am I? Eh. That's that's how I see the Flash. Just, come on, you like you know who the fucking Reverse Flash is, but you're not doing anything about it. Come on, do something. Do something, and you got Vibe, and you got like Killer Frost, and one of them's a villain. She's gonna turn into a villain. Firestorm's gone. Eh. Flash is kind of doing the same thing Arrow's doing. They're, they're trying to be safe. They're trying to keep all their family together, all close knit, and nice. I'm like I'm stalling. Because I don't want to talk about Daredevil. Because I got awesome things to say about Daredevil. But Daredevil, I thought it was going to suck. I thought this show was going to be freaking terrible. Watch the first episode, it's like, okay, this is what I thought it was going to be. Murdoch and Foggy getting their law firm together. And they do. And they get a law firm and things are going good. Then like you see Daredevil, not Daredevil yet, out and about doing his Daredevil thing. Thought that was going to happen to him just fighting crime. But no. He's trying to take down all the head honchos inside of Hell's Kitchen, all the big bad guys out there. That was a bit of a twist for me. I didn't see that coming. I didn't think they were going to pull that off. I thought it was going to be him fighting random bad guys like how it is in Arrow. And then, the second episode, you see a flashback in Matt Murdock's life. You see like his eyes with all the chemicals inside of it. This is spoiler filled, by the way. If you haven't watched the show, like this is going to be spoilers all over the place. But yeah, you see the kid with like, with, with, like the chemicals all in his eyes and he's like screaming out in pain and the kid pulled it off the kid like made me believe he had chemicals and shit in his eyes then like he played blind and the kid pulled that off too i was so surprised at how good this kid was he pulled off being a blind kid that was so freaking awesome and it seems like him and his father like he was so like his dad eyes like after he got into a fight and when his dad lost that fight, like how they, they got bonded together, like worry about your work in school, don't worry about fighting. His dad fucking cared for him. That was the only love Matt Murdock knew until his dad died. And he blames himself for that because he didn't want his dad to take a fucking dive. He didn't want his dad to take a dive. He wanted his dad to win. His dad did it for him. And he died for that. And Matt blames himself. So the only thing he can ever love is Hell's Kitchen. That's why like when the night nurse shows up and like confess her love to Matt. She knew that he couldn't love her back because all he loved is Hell's Kitchen. He can never love anyone else. 
And then like you you see the episodes later on with Foggy and Matt in college and he talks about the ex-girlfriend, Nachos, Electra. Like that's the same reason. Like he can't love anything because he doesn't know what the hell he loves. And that's beautiful to me. Didn't Foggy find out he's Daredevil? And you find out even more like Matt can tell when people are lying to him. That's another reason why Matt can't love. How can you love somebody if you know they're always lying to you? The whole story is beautiful. Then you got Karen. This show has layers all over the place. Her with the dead body. Then she takes money from the company. And like she's going crazy because she killed somebody. Layers. Then Wilson Fisk. I knew Vincent Nogger was going to kill it. I knew he was going to be fucking awesome as Wilson Fisk. I fucking knew it. And he did not let me down. The dude was all cool and collective until he killed that Russian, smashed his fucking head over that door. Holy fucking hell. That was gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Dark and twisted, but to pull that off and do it so well, don't make it, didn't make it cheesy, didn't make it dumb, made it very cinematic like a movie. Gorgeous, just wow. And then like his past story, Happy Family, like his dad kind of stern and tough on him, but he wanted to be mayor of the city, and then he lost. Then he got like fucking crazy, started beating his mom, then Wilson killed his fucking dad. And it explained why he loved watching that picture so much. It's obvious, but it's subtle, and it's beautiful, and I love every part of this show, except for the ending. I didn't love it, but I did like it. The last episode was good, but it left you wanting more, but not in a cliffhanger kind of way. In a way that, holy crap, you just made this awesome story and put a nice little end to it to make me want to keep watching more if you do a second season, but it doesn't leave me wondering, well, what happened to this guy? What happened to that guy? This story was absolutely brilliant from start to finish because at first it was a bit slow, but it has to be that slow for you to soak in all the richness of Hell Kitchen, all the richness of Matt, Foggy, Karen, Wilson, like Erwick, all those characters together. It has to be that way for you to fall in love with all the different aspects of the story and I loved every damn bit of it. It was fucking gorgeous. All of it was gorgeous in that hallway scene. Huh, <sighs> that hallway scene. And that fight with Naboo, Matt would have lost that fucking fight, dude. He got his ass kicked this entire season. He kept getting his ass kicked, even when Wilson, Wilson Fist fought him after he fought Naboo. He had to jump out the window to get away. It's just, wow. He almost quit being there double after that. The story is so good. If you're not watching this show, <laughs> I just ruined it for you. But if you're not watching this show, watch this show because it's really fucking amazingly brilliant, beautiful, stunning, magnificent. That's enough adjectives. I think that's enough. <laughs> and lastly, artist of the day. This artist, he goes by 5th of November. I think his name is Philip. Dudek, his art is wow, it's beautiful. The way he contrasts his light, he has this one picture of a mine, and like you can see the line on the dude's bicep, and you see a guard in the background, and like I don't know where that light is coming from, but I think it's from like an overhead light, but it's beautiful. And most of the words seem post apocalyptic, or like you're trying to tell a story in every single photograph. That's what it looks like. It looks like it's, it's a photograph that's taking. It's, it's beautiful. It's really gorgeous. I love all of it. Really awesome stuff. Dude from Poland. And he captures all these characters. All of this just brilliantly. Check him out. Let him know what you think about his work. And until next time, you guys take it easy. Okay. Something I want to do a little bit differently. Um, you guys have to do something funny or delete a scene with the sting. I want to tell you guys about a comic book you should read. It's The Man Without Fear, written by Frank Miller. It's kind of the same as the TV show, but in the eyes of Frank Miller, it's more like Batman Year One, but Daredevil Year One, I guess you could say. It's pretty fucking good. If you want to like just get a comic book version of the story you just watched on Netflix, read this comic book. If you want to see what kind of happens after, maybe a little bit what happens after, read Daredevil Yellow. Really good. If you want to like skip ahead a bit, Read uh, the swashbuckling, the, the Scarlet Swashbuckler. That's what it's called, the Scarlet Swashbuckler. Read that comic book. 
really awesome shit. Like, wow. Daredevil's awesome. Daredevil is, he's similar to Batman in ways, he's similar to the Kingpin in ways also, but he's his own character because he has that disability, that, that crutch, I guess you can say, because he's blind and because he's different. And I guess like his religion is a big factor and what makes him so damn different and unique also. But yeah, check out these comic books. Let me know what you think. I love talking to you guys about random, silly comic book stuff. Take it easy.